Okay, today we're going to cover one of the uh, important concepts in Java and really in all of software development and all of what's called object oriented software development. Um, we've talked about classes and classes are representative of some entity within our within the scope of our problem. Depends on what our problem is. Um, you know, that that will be used to define what classes we have uh, in a case of a, a, if our problem was doing a, a system for a college, for example, to use the example I mentioned before, some of our classes would include uh, students would include uh, instructors would include administrators would include majors would include. Um, Facilities like rooms, buildings, computer labs, and so on down the line. Now, the topic we're going to talk about today is inheritance. And inheritance is one way that two classes can be related to each other. All right. For example, all right, I just talked about. Um, we have facilities, we have computer labs, we have classrooms, we have gymnasiums, all right? Uh, all of those are facilities, all right? Uh, therefore, and they're related in some manner, all right? So what we could do if we were developing a system like this is show that relationship through what is called inheritance. Now, in inheritance, what you have is what is what we call an is a relationship between entities. An is a relationship. For example, a dog is a mammal. Cat is a mammal. A mammal is a squirrel. Is that correct? No. All the way around. Now, if we we're developing a computer system where we need to keep track of dogs, cats, and squirrels, we might set up an inheritance between a mammal class and a dog class, a cat class, a squirrel class. All right, because we have this is a relationship. And whenever you have an inheritance situation, uh, you have what's called the sometimes called the parent class, and then you have the child class. Um, sometimes also termed the super class and the subclass. This side the subclass is a more specialized version of this class. It's a super class, super type. Sometimes called inheritance is called specialization for that reason. If you have something and you have a more specialized version of it, that is called a subclass. Well, why are we interested in this? We're interested in this because in an inheritance structure, these classes have some methods, attributes, et cetera, in common, all right? And we can actually reduce our code by creating that inheritance relationship between the two classes. Let me 
take up a, 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 an example with mammals and these other classes. All right. So we could have, for example, and again, this is going to be a little bit absurd, but bear with me. I hope it, I hope it gets the idea across. We had a class for mammals. We could put certain things in it. The birthday of the mammal, right? All mammals have a birthday, all right? Your cat has a birthday. The squirrel in the park has a birthday. We might not know what it is, but it has one, right? Um, they all have a weight. All right. And we could probably, if we thought about it, they all have a length, maybe. I don't know, length or height, I guess we could say. Um, if I'm not mistaken, all mammals have some sort of fur. So we could put that, the, the type of fur that it has as an attribute. These are all attributes that all mammals share. All right. Now, there's methods that we could share too if we're creating this class. There might be an eat method on our mammal class. There might be a drink method on our mammal class, and so on down the line. If we define something as a soup or as a subclass of this, and it's usually indicated this way on an object diagram, with the arrow pointing to the superclass, what we're saying is a dog has all the things that are in the mammal class because a dog is a type of mammal, but it has some additional things that are only true of dogs. Like there might be a bark method. There might be an is a good boy property. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up, right? You don't hear that with people with cats. You know, dogs you always hear, are you a good boy? But you never hear people say that with cats. So I don't know, because all cats are kind of twisted, I think, in their own ways. But anyhow, we're going to say that you that that's, a, that's an attribute of dogs, just like barking is, an, uh, is a method that these dogs have. So when you inherit a subclass from a superclass, you don't have to redo any of these functions or attributes. The subclass gets them for free, all right? Um, however, we can define extra things that that subclass does, either in terms of extra attributes or extra methods. For example, Maybe dogs eat a different way than other mammals. I don't know if that's true or not, but we could say, for instance. And we could do the same for all the other mammals that exist. Gallop. Might be a method that exists on horse that doesn't exist on other mammals. All right. Let's try to get something that we might actually do in a in a real life situation because I doubt if people are writing. I don't know. Maybe people do write. Probably people do write applications concerning animals. Uh, you know, maybe not this simplistic, but let's consider maybe a more realistic one. And let's talk about a uh, college has facilities. A 
And some of these facilities can include a classroom. Dining hall. And a lab. And there can be different kinds of labs, right? in different sciences and biology and chemistry and physics and computer science and so on. So there could be a computer lab. Could be a chemistry lab. We'll simplify it down to those two. Maybe there's a special kind of dining for faculty, faculty dining, a dining hall specific to faculty. We could create inheritance like this. <coughs> the arrow again indicates going, it goes from the subclass to the superclass. And as you notice, we can have many layers of inheritance. A computer lab is a lab and a lab is a facility. So indirectly, a computer lab is also an example of a facility, you know. So what are some of the things that would exist for a facility? You know, there's probably a building code, probably a room number, all right? All of these different kinds of facilities have a building and a room. You know, this is BU, don't tell me, 104, 102, 102 okay, what BU, whatever it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've been in the same classroom for like, this is like the third semester in a row I've been in the same classroom, so I don't know any of the other rooms uh, in this building other than the labs. But regardless of the kind of facility it is, it has a building code and a lab. Classrooms have it, labs have it, computer labs have it. All these have a building code and a lab. A facility probably has a capacity. Probably a certain number of people that you can fit in a facility. And, and every facility, no matter what it is, has a capacity. Like, for example, uh, the capacity of a computer lab is determined by how many computers there are in it. The capacity of a classroom is how many chairs there are in it, how many desks. Plus, there's probably fire regulations and things like that that come into play, too. But the bottom line is every facility has a capacity associated with it. Maybe there's a name or a description. And so on. Now, the classroom is going to have things that other facilities don't have. Like, there's probably not a projector in a, in a dining hall. All right? So, projector, let's say. Um, whiteboards. so on down the line. A classroom can be scheduled for a class where you're not scheduling classes in a, a dining hall. So schedule class might be a method that you can only do for a classroom. You can't do for these others. Maybe you can do it for a lab too. Schedule lab. So that's the basic idea of inheritance. When you inherit something, you have a subclass that is a specialized form of the superclass. It passes the is a test. All right. So a dining hall is an example of a facilities, or you could say is a kind of facility. All right. A faculty dining hall is a kind of dining hall, which is a facility, and so on. 
When you do that, you do not need to redefine the methods and attributes of the superclass. The subclass gets those for free. You only need to define what is different. All right. What is different between a classroom and a any other room on campus? What is different between a dog and other mammals? And so on. All right. So we're coding the differences. Now, one thing we can do is we can override functions. All right. What do I mean by override functions? Let's say if we had a method in facilities that was um, well, I, 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 the example I uh, give was going to really show my age. I was going to put a method of calculate heating cost or a room, calculate annual heating cost, which would I could have that on facility, but I was going to say back in the old days, you had the computer in a room that was air conditioned. So it was kept at a different temperature, but we haven't done that in many centuries. I don't think. All right. So that would be probably a poor example. Um, well, let's go to the pizza example for this. I can't think one off the top of my head for this example, but I can think of one for the pizza example. So we're going to extend the pizza example that we did last time by creating a subclass. I should say before I get into this, what inheritance isn't. What are some examples where inheritance isn't? For example, if I were to ask you, is a do, is, there, is there an inheritance relationship between tire and automobile? The answer is no, because an automobile is not a tire, and a tire is not an automobile. All right? A tire is a part of an automobile. So that's not inheritance. That's actually something else. That's called composition, when you have a class that's comprised of other classes. So you could think of a car as being, uh, you know, an engine object, a steering uh, system object, a tire object, so brake objects, and so on and so forth. And a, a, a car is comp comprised of all those things taken together. But it's not an is a relationship, all right? Likewise, customer and sales rep, is there an inheritance relation there? No. Customer deals with a sales rep, a sales rep deals with customers, but a sales rep is not a customer, a customer is not a sales rep. All right, now in the case of the pizza example, we're gonna have a special kind of order, all right? We've developed orders so far, and the orders are sort of implied to be just, we never really said the type they are, but we didn't take an address or anything. So we can probably assume that those are pickup orders, right? Because if they're delivery orders, uh, we're missing some attributes. So we currently have an order class in our pizza example. Let's say I wanted to have a different special kind of order class. A delivery order. All right. Now let's think of let's think of attributes and think of whether they belong in the order or the delivery order. The name on the order. Well, all orders have a name, so I would put the name up here. Uh, the phone number. They all have a phone number. The address, well, you don't need to give your address if you're picking up the pizza. So your address, city, state, and zip are attributes on a delivery order. 
because not all orders have that. Um, calculate the bake time. One of the methods we have on here. Calculate the cost. We add a pizza to our order. We do all those things to delivery orders, but we probably calculate the costs differently, right? But we're going to override that method. Remember, we don't have to redefine any of these, but if they happen to be different, a different way of calculating <laughs> the cost for the order, we can override the orders calculate cost method by putting a calculate cost method on the delivery order. Likewise, calculate delivery time It's something we don't have to calculate for a regular order. That's only true for delivery orders. All right, so let's look at the example we have here. And I'm going to start up opening, opening the start up opening the uh, order and the delivery order class because those are the two that we're most interested in this in this example. We'll look at the other classes too. Because obviously, since we've thrown a new class in the mix here, we better update our test code, right? Because there's a whole new kind of order that we need to test to make sure our code works. Our pizza class, do we have to change that? Not really, all right? Pizzas that are on a delivery order are the same pizzas that are on a pickup order. Nothing really has changed about the pizza class, so we make no changes to that class. So let's take a look at our order class. And we had this from last time. Uh, I'll just, we'll spend a few minutes revisiting stuff and then we'll look at the subclass. Import Java list, Java utils array list because this has an array list. What are array lists? We talked about those last time. They're a collection of items. In other words, a list can have multiple values, doesn't just have one value, like a regular variable. Uh, an array list can change in size. That's the chief difference between it and an array. If we define an array as having 10 things in it, an array will always have 10 things in it. All right. Whereas an array list, we can make an array list that initially starts out with nothing. And we can add the first item, second item, third item. We can remove items, we can add new items, and so on. So it's a more flexible example of an array, is an array list. What are our attributes <laughs> for the order? As a name, a phone number, and the array list of pizzas. All right? That's how you read this. This is an array list. What can the array list cover? What can the array list contain? It can contain a list of pizzas. It's a list of pizzas. So each member of the array list is a pizza. And that's what this says. We can't put something else in the array list. If we had a class for sandwiches, we couldn't put a sandwich in this array list because it's an array list for pizzas. We have our constructor. 
We have our set name, get name, set phone, get phone, add pizza, calculate bake time, and calculate price for the order. Bake time and price, both of them do essentially the same thing. They loop through the list of uh, pizzas in the array list. They grab each pizza and they either get the price or the bake time from it and do something with it. Here we're adding up the price for each pizza. Here we're seeing which pizza has the maximum bake time. Because we're saying whatever has the maximum bake time, that's what we're going to assume is the bake time for the whole order. One thing that we did is we made change these from being private to protected. We only talked about two things before. We talked about private and public. And we said we kept our attributes private and made our methods usually public. What protected means is it can be used in this class or in any of the subclasses. So any of the subclasses can refer to the name. All right. Delivery order. Starts out by saying delivery order extends order. This means we have an inheritance relationship. This is a superclass. This is a subclass. Delivery order inherits from order. That means it gets all of the methods and properties of order. So can we call add pizza on a delivery order object? We absolutely can. Even though there's no add pizza method in this class. But it inherits from order, and order has an add pizza method. So as we said before, with the delivery order, you're going to need the address. So we had the um, added those attributes for address, city, state, and zip, and we made get and set methods for those. Set address and to get address. We create a constructor that, that, that contains the argument of the name, the argument of the phone number, and the address, city, state, and zip. Now, here's something that's very important about this. The way that these objects are actually going to get created. So, if we say something like this, delivery order DO equals delivery order we have these arguments. We're not going to worry about the arguments right now. What first has to happen is we first have to call the constructor on the superclass. And then we can call the construct, we can execute the constructor code for the subclass. can think of the subclass almost as being like an add-on to the superclass. We have all this stuff in the superclass, and we're going to add on some stuff that's only in the subclass. 
Well, in order to do that, in order to add stuff on to what's in the superclass, we have to build an object of that type first. So really, we're first going to run the constructor code on the superclass, and then we're going to run the constructor code for the subclass. So when I call this function here, when I call the constructor on delivery order, and I have my six arguments here, the first thing it does, first thing it's going to do is it's going to call the superclass of the constructor on the superclass and give it those two arguments. See, these are two arguments, the, the name and the phone are the first two arguments of the uh, delivery order constructor. Those two get called and get passed to the superclass. And that constructor executes. It's called constructor chaining. And it's important to know that we can't create the delivery order part of this object until we've created the superclass part of the object. We then have our sets and gets, which are really no different. Calculate delivery time. We're going to say that's 30 minutes more than the bake time. So if it, costs, if it takes 15 minutes to bake, we're going to say the delivery time is 45 minutes. And calculate the price. <clears throat> we're going to calculate the price of using the function on the super class. That's what super means. And then we're going to add five to that total, and that will be the price of the delivery order. So we've overridden the method calculate price on the super class. First, we're going to call that method. We're going to get a value, and then we're going to add five to it. And that will be the price for the delivery order. All right, let's compile this. I mean, let's, I'm going to compile this. And I'm going to make some errors to show you what happens. I'll go to the command prompt to make sure we understand what those errors mean. Pilot. And everything's okay. No, it isn't. Um, I think I was demonstrating something. We'll we'll go, but we'll fix that first. I'll fix that without any explanation, and then we'll develop these errors later on. All right. There, everything compiled clean. Now, what if we omit this code here? What's going to happen? Let's find out. Nothing good's going to happen, right? Probably not. All right, let's notice what this says. This essentially says there is no, no argument constructor in the order class. Why does it think it wants a no, no argument constructor? Well, I'll tell you. In our constructor, I haven't said to do the superclasses constructor. Yet the superclasses constructor has to run first. 
Therefore, it's going to call the no argument constructor in the superclass if we don't explicitly call a constructor on the superclass. And how do we explicitly call a constructor on the superclass? By saying super and give the two arguments. If this is omitted, it's going to, it still has to call this the constructor on the superclass. It doesn't know which one to call, so it will call the no argument constructor. But there is no no argument constructor in the superclass because we defined a constructor that takes two arguments. And if we have defined any constructors, then the no argument compile generated constructor disappears. So the first line in the constructor of a subclass has to be super and call the version of the constructor you want on the superclass. Or it's going to assume you want to call the no argument constructor on super. And if you don't have a no argument constructor on super, you're going to get a compile error. So I corrected that, I saved everything, and it compiles again. Let's look at the test case, unit test. I have a test of several things. I create pizza one, which is small and thick crust. Pizza two, which is large. And I don't set the crust, so I, it defaults to whatever I set the default to in the pizza class. I broke down this into two lines and defined the pizza variable, P3, and then created the instance of it this way. Then I create my orders. Here's how I create the order. This is creating the regular order, <laughs> adding the two pizzas to it, and then getting the cost of the order and the total bake time for the order. The second order I create is not an order, but a delivery order. I call the constructor on delivery order, which in turn is going to call the constructor on the order. I call delivery order on the delivery order object. I call add pizza, P3 and P4. Is that legal? Even though there's no add pizza method in the delivery order class? Yes, there, yes, that is legal because it inherits from the order class and the order class does have an add pizza method. And then I can ask for the price of the order, bake time, and the delivery time. I can ask for the delivery time because it's a delivery order. When I call calculate price, it is going to call the, cal the version of the calculate price that exists on the delivery order class. So let's run this and let's see the results we get. All right, the delivery order had this pizza and this pizza on it. And this pizza cost $9, and this pizza cost $12, so that's $21 for 
but plus the five dollar delivery charge makes the cost of the order twenty six. The bake time of the pizza is still the largest of these, which is sixteen minutes. But the delivery time for the order is the bake time plus thirty minutes or forty six minutes. Any questions about this? Either people here or people that are viewing online. things to remember from this lecture. Inheritance, you get the attributes and methods on the superclass within the subclass. That is if you define the, uh, the, the, the uh, attributes as being protected. You can add attributes and methods to the subclass and you can also override methods in the subclass. So if I call calculate price, I'm going to get this version of calculate price and not this version. You, however, can call the version in the superclass just by saying super. And likewise, you do the same thing in the constructor by calling the super constructor in this manner. The constructors of the super class have to happen first before the constructor code of the subclass runs. If you do not explicitly call the constructor on the super class, it will call by default a no argument constructor on the super class. And if you do not have one defined, it's going to give you an error. All right. Um, that's all I had for today. Um, we'll review this a few more times because there's some additional, um, what I call it, uh, so quirks, if you will, the way inheritance works. And we're going to get into a topic known as polymorphism, which is related to uh, inheritance. And we're also going to look at constructor chaining in a little more detail. So we're not done with this concept yet. So if it's not clear, um, bear with me. By all means, ask questions either in class or in lab or email me. Uh, I will see you either in lab or next week then.